Hi there. Measurement and finance, just looking at practical workshop and taking off onto dimension paper. So on the left, I've got my um, drawings. On my right, I've got my calc sheet. Now I do like to sketch up my calc sheet before I transpose it onto um, Excel, just to make sure I'm right. Um, but you don't have to do this every time, obviously. This is just me to sh showing you how it works. OK, so um, first up, I'm look what I've done here is I've looked at my dimensions. So my soil excavation is going to be a volume. I'm going to be excavating in a volume. So I need a length, I need a width, and I need a depth. So if you have a look there, I've put them all in millimetres, and I end up with 17 million millimetres cubed. OK, that's not quite going to work. So um, what we do is we transpose that into metres. My final value is going to be in metres cubed. So actually, my centre line is 28 metres, right? My um, my width here is 700 which is 0 0.7 meters so i put that information together i times them all together so i put them on top of each other and i put them in the dimensions column because that's what they are every single dimension that i'm tying them together goes into this column okay and then timesing how many times is that going to happen is it well i've only got one building right now so i'm only going to do that once okay um and then what i do is i times them all together times 1 by 28.11 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.9 and I end up with this. This is my final summing up or squaring squaring off my calculation. So my soil excavation in metres cubed is 17.71. Okay, so if I move on and I look at my concrete pour, again, my concrete pour will be in metres cubed. It's a volume. If you go to the NRM, the new rules of measurement, um, if it's only a screed pour, so it's really small, um, then you will be doing that in metres squared because you're only doing a coverage. However, we are doing the foundation, so it needs to be a volume, metres cubed. Again, I'm timesing three values together. Three values together. I've got my centre line. So we've done the centre line um, perimeter measurement earlier. I'm timesing that by the width okay, of my pore. I'm then timesing it by the height. My Those three values gives me my volume of my pore. Okay? Um, if you then move on and you look at brickwork, now this is where it's slightly different. Centre line is the same, okay? Um, do bear in mind, I'll tell you afterwards about this, but um, you are, if you are got your brickwork, your block work, and your concrete foundation, the centre lines may not be smack bang down the middle because you want it to be as accurate as possible. So you might want to actually measure your centre line for your bricks and your centre line for your box separately. Now, I've done that in a previous slide, so please have a look at that. Um, however, I'm going to keep the same centre line just so it's really easy for you to see. That's smack down, bang, sorry, smack bang down the centre of the whole excavation. So, right, so that's my perimeter. So I'm, I'm measuring that whole perimeter that goes around the outside of the building, and I'm timesing it by the height. Don't need to know the volume of my brickwork. I don't need to know the volumes of the walls because standard brickwork has a standard depth, a standard thickness. So don't really need to be talking about volumes. And that's also in the NRM, the new rules of measurement. So if you have a look at that, it will clearly tell you to measure brickwork, blockwork, etc. If it's walls um, in meters squared. OK, so look that up, check that out just in case it's changed by the time you get around to looking at this. Um, and that's that. So I'm measuring my height by my uh, center line perimeter and that's that okay 23.89 meters squared now if I was doing block work I may have a different center line so it may not be to 28.11 because I might have been a bit more accurate and measured that, that value there however um, the height would be the same okay so I could technically right now I could just copy that put it below and call it engineering block work so I'd have my brickwork and my block work um, so you could do that if you wanted. However, what we what I'm going to show you is actually this bit here where if you were in a position of a cavity wall where you had inner and outer skin were brickwork, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Now you can just you can stipulate it within this section here. So engineering brickwork, you can say it's cavity wall, so it's double skin. So actually when you're calculating, um, there will be calculations that you can do um, later on to allow for that second wall. Or you could just say, do you know what? I'm going to do two walls. So there you go. My time zing has the number two. And that allows me to say, look, I've got two of the same. All right. Two walls. Um, they both got the same perimeter and they both got the same height. All right. So that's what you do there. So here we go. Transpose it all onto a spreadsheet for you. So as I said earlier, your time zing is always 
the outside the first um, column and then your dimensions go one above the other and then what you're doing is you're multiplying them all together to give you your summing up which is your um, your squaring off yeah so those three values together make that 17.7 um, okay and then as long as you've titled it described it you can do as much or as little description as you like really it's up to you it's your stuff so do what you think feel is is better um, and then also there is my Willis's elements. This is how he's done it. So as you can see, little nice drawing there showing you the topsoil depths, etc. Um, so they've done some calculations down there about the height of brickwork as well. Um, however, when you're looking at this in situ concrete, the concrete pour, you look at my values and those values are exactly the same. OK, so you end up with the same um, outcome. All right. All right. Good luck. Take care. Bye.